This evening, we are privileged to have Jan Kenast. Sometimes it happens that we have the good fortune to have scheduled a guest at the very moment when events in his country seem to have taken an historic turn. And this evening is one of those occasions. Equally, Ambassador Knest's perspective on the political landscape of Poland and of Eastern Europe should be timely and fascinating to all of us. He was, during World War II, a member of the Polish resistance movement, for which he was imprisoned in the Nazi concentration camps at Auschwitz, Flossenburg, and Dachau. Following the war, he studied law at the University of Warsaw. He was active in the youth movement in Poland and was a journalist as well as a director of a publishing house. From the 1960s to the present, he has served his country in some diplomatic capacity or other. He was second and later first secretary in the Polish Washington Embassy from 1964 to 1968, so that he is now, in fact, doing his second tour of duty in our country. In the late 70s, he served as ambassador to Brazil and came in 1987 as his country's ambassador. I know that we are enormously interested in recent developments in his homeland, and we look forward with great pleasure to hearing his perspective and his comments this evening. And so I am delighted to introduce him to you now, Jan Kinast, Ambassador of the Polish People's Republic. Can you see me? Uh, I mean, can you hear me? <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. Thank you very much uh, for such a nice introduction and uh, reception. I should be aware of that because uh, I, uh, I received uh, a letter in the invitation. I, uh, I read that uh, I will meet a large, what is true, appreciative, uh, and uh, well-informed, and that's only too bad, audience. I also received uh, another letter from, uh, from your senator, Barbara Mikulski, uh, who uh, kindly advised me that uh, I will be address an excellent group of people. Well, uh, that's uh, a real honor to me to be here tonight. But uh, before I, uh, I, uh, I start, I would like to take you, tell you uh, the story that happened to me this morning on my way to Baltimore. I stopped for a coffee break and uh, a man uh, next to me uh, began a conversation. He wanted to know why I'm going to Baltimore and so on and so on. So I explained that uh, <clears throat> I like to meet uh, the people, that such meetings, such occasions uh, offer me an excellent opportunity uh, to polish my English. He, he, he attentively listened to me and then said, there is no need. Your English is enough Polish. <laughs> well, once again, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, first of all, thank you very much for that kind invitation, invitation and introduction. I have come to you in a time which, with no exaggeration, can be described as a crucial moment for our nation and our state. Changes underway in Poland are of historic importance, not only for us, but for the whole of Eastern Europe, and more broadly, 
for the East-West relations. To speak today about these developments is a real challenge for the speaker since practically everybody knows everything about them. These days, if there is nothing about Poland in morning papers or on TV, I call Warsaw to check what's happened there. <laughs> Nevertheless, I will try to tell you about a few things that I consider as uh, especially important. The process of political and economic reforms hasn't started in our country yesterday or the day before that. Reforms have been taken up at the beginning of the 80s, but for many reasons, they have not brought about desired results, much like in nature, both internal and external conditions have to ripen for the changes to be able to take place. Polish political and economic reforms have uh, significantly accelerated only after the conclusion of the roundtable talks which took place in Warsaw from February to April this year. Let me remind you that among the participants in the talks there were not only representatives of the previous coalition of the Polish United Workers Party, Peasant Party, Democratic Party, Party and other political forces which governed the country interruptedly since 1948, but also representatives of Solidarity and various other opposition groups. Agreements worked out during the round table have served as a basis for parliamentary elections in June 1989, a few months ago. The representative character of our parliament has been significantly broadened. Members from the political opposition have been elected to both houses. Seats in the newly created Senate have been contested in a totally free elections. An event without a precedence in our part of the world since the end of uh, World War II. Results of the elections proved that solidarity enjoys large public support and uh, have brought about a change of the political setup in Poland. Previous political coalitions have disintegrated political compromise negotiated at the round table manifested itself in the election of our country's top leadership. Wojciech Jaruzelski, representative of the Polish United Workers' Party, has become Poland's president. The mission to form a new government has been entrusted to Tadeusz Mazowiecki, solidarity activists closely connected with the church. As a result, for the first time in socialist countries, a government was created in which representatives of the Workers' Party have fa uh, had found themselves in minority. Let me quote how both politicians described the situation in the country and determined challenges facing them after they took office. Prime Minister Mazowiecki, in his uh, parliamentary expose on uh, September 12, said, among others, quote, I am convinced that the decisive majority of Poles understand the goals we should strive to achieve in a similar way, carrying their hearts the same idea of our homeland. We want to live with dignity in a sovereign, democratic, and law-abiding state which everybody, independent from ideological and political differentiation, 
could consider his own state. We want to live in a country that has a healthy economy, where it is profitable to work and save, where satisfying basic material needs doesn't associate with anguish and humiliation. We want Poland to be open to Europe and to the world, Poland without any inferiority complex. We are being faced today by two major problems of Poland, political restructuring of the state and taking the country out of the economic crisis. The next, unquote, the next day, President Jaruzelski opened his first meeting with the newly elected government by saying, unquote, I don't think it is an exaggeration to say that there is uh, no other government in the contemporary world that is a focus of so much attention. Changes in Poland, proceeding within the socialist formula, evoke understandable interest and even sort of emotions from different quarters. The fact that we are sitting here together, some may consider a historic joke. Others would see it as a logic of history. But certainly, it is a great historical experiment and a great chance for our nation. The most important thing today is for this experiment to succeed. There are great hopes that it would succeed. But there are also concerns that it might fail. Hope dominates, however, as well as growing conviction that we will succeed, that the launched for breakthrough will come, unprecedented chances having emerged." Unquote. Well, pluralistic values and attitudes have traditionally been characteristic for the Polish society. In the, past, in the past, however, this fact has not been always reflected in our political structures and political mechanisms. Our current, current parliament, however, which has uh, become a true center of political life, is a place where various ideas and opinions are being floated. And, uh, social consensus on key political, social, and so economic issues is being worked out, although sometimes very difficult. Social acceptance for Mr. Mazowiecki's government, confirmed by consecutive public opinion polls, is an important asset in a period of serious challenges and dilemmas. They concern, first of all, the economy. Because, and that I like to emphasize very much, because success of political reforms depends in the last in instance on the successful resolution of economic problems. Four weeks ago, uh, representatives of the Polish government who participated in the annual meeting of the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank in Washington, have brought with them memorandum on the economic reform program in Poland and the role of foreign economic financial assistance. The memorandum has been presented to the international financial institutions, uh, ministers of finance of many Western countries, to the government of the United States, as well as made available to many members of uh, Congress. The initial response was favorable. On the basis of that memorandum, an economic program of the government of Poland was uh, worked out, and uh, two weeks ago, on October 9th, was accepted by the Council of Ministers. 
That document outlines intentions of the government of Poland and, and, and uh, explains Poland's urgent needs for foreign financial assistance. What are the basic aims of the economic reform? The government of Poland intends to transform the Polish economy into a pro-market economy with an ownership structure changing in the direction of that found in the advanced industrial economies. Such a transition from a centrally planned economy to a market economy has no historical precedent. And uh, the government of Poland is aware of the profound conceptual, institutional, and financial barriers that must be overcome in order to achieve success. The government will require the goodwill and the active assistance of all social groups in Poland, as well as of the international community, in order that uh, Poland may arrive peacefully, safely, and promptly at the desired destination. The transformation of the Polish economy must be carried out in extremely adverse economic circumstances. Nevertheless, Polish government is committed to undertaking a program of comprehensive and rapid economic change. This comprehensive program will have three elements. Monetary and uh, price stabilization, structural adjustment, foreign economic assistance, and reduction of external debt. Success will require a coordinated and rapid advance on all three, three fronts. The government uh, economic program calls for two types of uh, actions. First, stabilizing the economy, and in particular, bringing the, the present that is rampant inflation in hand, and uh, second, transforming the economic system. In the first stage, which will last no longer than to the beginnings of 1990, <laughs> actions will be taken to slow down the rate of uh, price increases, check the flight away from, from the zloty, that is from the Polish currency, and curb the budget deficit. A number of uh, concrete measures was provided to attain that goal, which is uh, extremely difficult. The phase of, of uh, substantive changes will begin not later than uh, in early 1990. It will imply the application of a set of uh, radical anti-inflation measures, which uh, carried out into effect consistently will allow for decisively reducing the growth rate of prices and to recapture market balance. <laughs> Parallel with efforts to counteract inflation and stabilize the economy, the government shall take steps leading to breakthrough change of the economic system. This will consist of introducing the market economy institutions. Instrumental to that will be ownership changes, making the ownership structure similar to that industrially developed countries, greater autonomy of uh, state enterprises, application of full market mechanism, particularly the freedom of price setting, elimination of rationing and uh, mandatory intermediation, uh, launching a capital market, further reform of the banking system and the uh, rules of money credit policy, establishment of a labor market, and so on. Preparations for introduction of the outline changes are being started already this year. The fundamental changes are to take place in the years 1990 and 91. 
One of the seven chapters of that uh, uh, program accepted by the government of, uh, well, I, I realize now that whenever I had in my text uh, the government of Poland, my secretary uh, put it, uh, it as uh, GOP. <laughs> I, I, I hope she doesn't take sides in American politics. <laughs> Well, so one of uh, those chapters uh, concerns foreign support for the program of stabilization and changes of the system. The government is uh, of the opinion that close cooperation with uh, our creditors and the understanding of our economic situation as well as cooperation and uh, international assistance on the part of financial organizations and uh, governments is a necessary condition of implementation of the stabilization program and uh, an appropriate package of changes in this system. The government will strive for quick agreements with the International Monetary Fund and uh, the World Bank and for arrangements with uh, respective groups of uh, creditors as to conditions of debt servicing concordant with our payment capabilities. Simultaneous uh, steps will follow, making possible for an easier access of foreign capital to Poland and ensuring more stable and more beneficial conditions of investment without detriment to our interests. Beneficial conditions of profit transfer and tax policy should be the main factor ensuring attractiveness of investing in Poland. Such a law is already in place and I'm sure could be modified even further if only necessary. Realization of the program will require in particular possibly quick credits from highly developed countries to ensure in the fourth quarter of this year indispensable imports of raw and uh, intermediate materials for industrial and agricultural production, a, possible, uh, a possibly quick agreement uh, with the International Monetary Fund upon the adjustment program involving uh, simultaneous financial support totaling $700 million, uh, that is the so-called standby credit, which is offered to any member of the, of the IMF. World Bank credits starting still this year <coughs> for the financing of proje projects already agreed upon. And uh, we have uh, uh, four or five such uh, projects uh, in the total amount of uh, half a billion dollars. Extremely, projects in, extremely important uh, for our economy. Uh, financial assistance on the part of uh, the International Financial Corporation to support privatization oriented activities. Uh, guarantees from highly developed countries for a stabilization loan of one billion dollars with a view to uniformizing currency rates and stabilizing the domestic currency. Uh, then also improved conditions of uh, rescheduling of payment obligations to the Paris Club, that is the government debt, will seek a full rescheduling of principal and uh, interest payment in the years 18, uh, 1989 92, and uh, agreement with the Paris Club should restore access to government uh, guaranteed credits and help introduce facilitations and guarantees for foreign investors intending to engage their capital in Poland. Then uh, closer economic relations with the European community will also be an essential element supporting implementation of the economic program and we concluded such an agreement with EEC not so long ago. 
We also hope for technical assistance from IMF and World Bank in such areas like privatization, creation of stock exchange, establishment and supervision of private banking sector, monetary control, training of uh, modern professionally competent, competent managers, etc. Talking about uh, foreign assistance, foreign partners, let me emphasize that we recognize and welcome the American leadership in the understanding of Polish problems and providing the assistance for Poland. From the very start, on the day of uh, the signing the Roundtable Agreement in Poland, the President of the United States announced a package assistance for our country. Today, the President's proposal is even much broader and uh, sub substantial. If, you take, uh, if we take only one example, and that is the initiative of a $200 million grant for stabilization purposes submitted by uh, Mr. Bush to the Congress two weeks ago. We also expect a lot from U.S. efforts to convince its uh, Western allies to adopt equally generous programs of assistance. We are watching closely and are very impressed with the approach taken by the U.S. Congress toward Poland. The bill that uh, a few days ago was already voted by the House addresses almost all current economic problems uh, of uh, Poland. We also hope that the U.S. Senate will adopt a similar legislation very soon. And uh, now I would, like, uh, I would like you to know, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, representatives of that state, like Senator Barbara Mikulski, Senator Paul Sarbanes, Representative Stony Hoyer, and others, play a very important and constructive role on this Polish legislation. And uh, from this rostrum and in front of you, I wish to thank them for their noble endeavors. We are of, uh, of an opinion that current changes in Poland are a factor which enables the superpowers to walk away from the long-standing confrontation right in the heart of Europe. Uh, we will comply with the existing treaties and we are decidedly in favor of uh, mutually respecting national interests. That respect, however, does not impose any limitations as to the choice or change of the political system. We wish to contribute to the rebirth of the United Europe, in which Poland should find its place. And we like to see America to keep a solid and firm presence in the United Europe, including Eastern Europe. Polish-American relations remain an important area of our international activity. They have a long tradition, reaching back to the participation of Pulaski and Kościuszko in the American War of uh, Independence. They take into account that uh, six or eight or 10 or some people say 12 uh, million strong Polish-American community, justifiably proud of its contribution to the development of the United States. President Bush said in Hamtramck, Michigan, on the 17th of April, we are bound by a very special bond, a bond of blood, culture, and shared values. I cannot agree more with his words. President George Bush's visit to Poland in July, past July, has provided an important impulse for Polish-American contacts. President Jaruzelski and Prime Minister Mazowiecki have been invited to visit the United States, and I hope they will come next year. Next month, 
chairman of Solidarity, Lech Wałęsa, will pay a visit here. We have a lot of contacts at the governmental level. Over the last six, eight weeks, uh, three uh, US secretaries visited Poland, Secretary Elizabeth Dole, Secretary Ed Derwinski, as well as Secretary uh, Mosbacher. We successfully restored such important bodies like Joint Commission on Trade, Polish-American Economic Council, Joint Commission on the Cooperation in the Field of Science and Technology. We established cooperation with the United States Information Agency and concluded an agreement to open cultural centers in both countries. All these facts prove, I hope, that Polish-American relations have entered a phase of dynamic development. It is impossible to limit them only to the importance of American uh, economic aid for the Polish reforms. We notice also and appreciate very much increased interest of American business in broadening uh, economic ties with our country. Scientific and cultural cooperation becomes also more intensive as do indeed economic and social contacts between our peoples. We know well that the fate of uh, Polish reforms aimed at creating conditions for an effective pro-market economy and full democracy depends first of all on our own efforts on our own determination and consistency. We understand that these qualities cannot be replaced by any, even most extensive foreign assistance. It is easy to see, however, that without that outside support, especially during the first critical stages of the reform, our plans can fail it would be a great loss, not only for our nation, which pins its hopes for a better future on current reforms, but also a wrong signal for the other countries in Eastern Europe. Many times in the past, we were encouraged by our Western partners to embark upon bold pro-market and pro-democratic reforms. Today, they are becoming reality. The pace and scope of changes in Poland have surpassed boldest expectations of the outside observers and even of uh, ourselves. Uh, when uh, concluding my statement, I realize that you still may ask a fair and legitimate question. All right, but why we Americans? should help a distant country like Poland? Well, if this is the case, then I, of course, failed in my presentation. But on the other hand, I am uh, ready to take any question you would like to ask, assuming that I only know the answer. The uh, question is, does your government prefer today's borders for Poland or pre-World War II borders? Uh, I understand that uh, you ask me uh, what, uh, what kind of a cake I prefer. <laughs> a cake that uh, is uh, just in front of me or the cake which is uh, at the other store. Uh, well, yes, uh, Poland, as the result of the agreement, reached first in Yalta, second in Potsdam, between the big powers, was moved from the east to the west. And uh, I believe for one nation, such an overhaul in one century, it's enough. The question is, do you foresee it, the possibility of serious unrest in uh, what was uh, Eastern Poland. And Western Poland, because Silesia. Yeah. 
say, and North Poland. Pomerania, okay. Uh, well, uh, that question in a way is uh, related uh, to the previous one. At this point, I like to, uh, I like to assure you that uh, those uh, territories in the West and in the North uh, are very well integrated into the whole life of, uh, of Poland in all the, all the spheres. And uh, there is no distinction between the people who inhibit those territories from the, from the people who live uh, in the other parts of Poland. And that is to say, in other words, that if uh, there is any danger of unrest, of social unrest, and uh, at this moment, the only reason for that could be uh, economic conditions, then that danger is no bigger, in no way bigger in the West or in the East, because the people uh, feel and behave in a very similar way in uh, all the regions uh, of uh, of today's Poland, of contemporary Poland, which is pretty well, as I, once again I repeat that, a pretty well integrated country. Would you comment on the risk to Poland and its current attitude toward East German refugees? A risk to Poland? Well, in other words, if Poland continues to let East German refugees pass through Poland as they did recently uh, from Warsaw, do you foresee any risk? For Poland? Yes, for Poland. And connected with that, I wonder if you could comment on, in view of all of the problems you've discussed, what is the current situation of the Polish military? Of oh, the Polish military? The, the uh, second question has been added in that clarification, uh, and that is, uh, in general, the status thinking loyalties of the Polish military. Uh, all right, with regard to, uh, to East German uh, refugees, uh, no, I don't see any risk, any threat to Poland, stemming from this, uh, this uh, developments. Uh, we had, I even don't know whether we still have a number of uh, East German refugees in, uh, in Warsaw. And uh, as the result of the agreement reached by uh, GDR and uh, Federal Republic, uh, they uh, left Poland uh, going uh, to, uh, to West uh, Germany. Uh, so that is uh, <coughs> our position on that question was uh, absolutely clear. We accepted and were willing to accept any solution that would be worked out between the interested parties. And we behaved in, uh, in that uh, fashion. I don't know whether there are still uh, any refugees uh, from, uh, uh, from East Germany in uh, Warsaw. If, uh, even if they are, there is uh, no difficult for them uh, to, to, leave, uh, to, leave po for, uh, to leave Poland. Um, as far as um, uh, the second question, well, the state of military uh, forces. Uh, I hope the state the shape is good, uh, but uh, yes, there are changes, important changes. Uh, we reduce the number of troops. Uh, we said that uh, we will reduce by 40,000 
till the end of 1990. Uh, actually, we, the number of troops was already reduced by more than 30,000, and that is, that is about 10% uh, of, the, of the total uh, military force. Uh, second, uh, we, we use or we rather will try to use that industrial potential that exists in the industry that was uh, uh, producing uh, military equipment and, uh, and so forth, arms, to use it for civilian purposes which is not so easy, as you, as you probably know, because it is not so easy to switch from, from completely different type production to, a, to another. But uh, yes, we, we, will, uh, we will try to uh, restructure uh, in that way a part of the industry that, uh, that has worked for, for military purposes. We also uh, introduced uh, various uh, changes as far as uh, uh, military courses at high universities, at, at the universities. Uh, where there are also other changes taking into account uh, where so-called so -called conscious objectives. To uh, they, 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 they were created uh, conditions uh, for mm, uh, uh, what is the proper name for, for it? Uh, sub substantive uh, service, non non military service. Uh, uh, military forces. Uh, have played in the history of Poland an um, important role. Uh, Poland quite often in our history was in a situation when security, independence, sovereignty <coughs> depended on on our uh, military forces. And Poles are usually proud of, of, of the soldiers, and I hope that will continue to be, uh, uh, that pattern will, will be continued. The uh, question is, uh, or the, uh, the statement is that the security forces of the country are still under the control of the Communist Party. It's a statement. Uh, is there any prospect of a change in that particular relationship? Uh, I, uh, I wouldn't like to, uh, to distribute, uh, uh, to continue to distribute certain, uh, certain, uh, uh, certain slogans uh, which are uh, from time to time uh, repeated. Uh, security forces are first of all not so much under communist uh, dominance, but they are the part of a new government. Yes, it is true that the minister of, uh, of uh, the interior minister, in our, in our case this is uh, the minister um, uh, supervising police, uh, uh, security forces and so on, is a member of Communist Party, but he is a member of the government, of a new government, which does have a new prime minister. This is a broad coalition government. Uh, well, yes, the, the, the uh, members of the Polish United Workers' Party have uh, four portfolios. That is the Minister of Interior, uh, the Minister of Foreign Economic Relations, uh, the Minister of Defense, and uh, uh, 
well, <laughs> I'm sure that there is another one. And that's uh, four portfolios out of uh, 25 or 26. And I suppose we should look, we should consider a new government as a whole at least until it is a whole, and we hope it will continue that way, because that's the only solution for our problems. Now, to be more specific, however, uh, yes, there are changes uh, in, uh, in with regard to those forces, too. A part of those forces uh, uh, was dissolved. And uh, I'm sure there will be more changes in that field, too. Would you uh, comment on the uh, overall Russian reaction to the process of democratization in Eastern Europe? Generally speaking. <laughs> OK. Well, uh, First of all, uh, I think uh, that uh, Russians are pretty serious with uh, the uh, perestroika. Yes, there is a kind of uh, interrelationship between perestroika and uh, our reforms. Uh, if we fail, then uh, that uh, I, I'm not going to say that perestroika will fail, but that will be a setback uh, for that process in the Soviet Union, no doubt about that. If perestroika, however, fails before our reforms fail, that will be a setback a difficult, tough setback for us. That doesn't mean that a failure in one country means a failure everywhere. No, it's not that situation. But it would create a burden. It would create a setback. I think we should not underestimate uh, the perestroika processes, the seriousness with which the Soviet people, the Russians, are, are handling the political changes, perhaps also economic changes, in their country. Quite often, well, even today, I was asked uh, an obvious question. All right, but tell us whether those processes, whether those reforms are irreversible. Once you set in motion such a process like that in the Soviet Union, or like those in Poland and other countries, then you cannot simply stop it. There can be some ups and downs, as in any process, in political process, in, any, in public life of any country. But in that sense, I believe, I strongly do believe, that those processes are irreversible. As much irreversible as anything can be in public political life. To what degree would the Soviet Union tolerate or oh. be happy with um, a loosening of the ties of the Soviet Union to the countries? Uh, uh, yes, and, and, and the question of troops. Uh, I would like to, to address the, the, fashion or the, the question of, uh, of troops uh, first. Uh, well, let's, uh, let's be frank. Uh, the Soviets uh, have uh, troops uh, in Poland and uh, in uh, other countries in Eastern Europe. 
Americans have their troops uh, in, uh, in Europe too. I tried to, well, I, 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 I touched that question during my presentation. That is, that is first of all, a question of, of that confrontation that has existed between the two superpowers and Europe and, and uh, especially Central Europe is uh, a heart of that confrontation. We hope, we would like to see that that confrontation might cease, might disappear, including the forces. At the same time, I said, and I would like to repeat that, that we hope for a, for a Europe as a whole, and uh, Poland being a part of that unified Europe. That means that a lot has to be done to overcome the existing division. We didn't make, we didn't introduce that division. We are not happy with that division. We would like to see that division disappear. And we know how it could be achieved. And first of all, this is the question of the state of uh, uh, Soviet-American relations. And one more question, uh, one more uh, sentence. In that unified Europe, we believe that the American presence, not necessarily a military, a military presence, should be solid and firm, and firm, because your ties to Europe are obvious, because your roots are from Europe, because the United States twice already had to fight because of the wars that were started in Europe. So this is also, I believe, that Europe, that kind of Europe is also in the interest of the uh, national security uh, of this country. Thank you. Really two questions. I think they're short enough to answer, though. Uh, if Western, is Western aid going to be enough to help you with your problems? Uh, in Poland? Uh, if not, what would you do? And secondly, does Poland have any interest in changing its name as Hungary did yesterday? And uh, on the first question, <laughs> there is uh, what I can say with full responsibility that uh, we see an immense resources of a good will. Uh, on the part of uh, Western partners. Now I hope that uh, we will come a time when we will see also that uh, cooperation and assistance, which, uh, which uh, is still uh, under consideration and uh, preparation and, uh, and so on and so on. Uh, for the time being, we we register a real increase, enormous growth in uh, Poland-Polish affairs and, uh, and, that, uh, and that good will. What, uh, how uh, that will, good will will materialize, that still remains to be seen. That, uh, such a materialization, of course, could be enormously useful for the political reforms, for, for economic reforms, for, for everything in Poland. And if there, is no, if, if there is no assistance at all, well, <laughs> we'll continue to, uh, to to do what, whatever we can on our own.
that is for sure. Uh, about the plans of uh, changing the name, uh, uh, let me uh, respond uh, to that question in, uh, in such a way. Uh, uh, there is uh, already a discussion about new constitution. Uh, I, uh, well, the, 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 the constitution actually is an old one. It was uh, adopted in 1952. There were, of course, uh, various amendments, but generally speaking, that constitution doesn't correspond anymore to the new, especially those newly emerging realities. So it has to be changed. But the constitution is something important. You don't have to be in, in a such a hurry to prepare a bad law. Perhaps it's better to think twice and to prepare a good law. And constitution is the most important law. Uh, and I'm sure that uh, during, the, uh, during the preparations of that constitution, many things, all the aspects will be discussed, including this one. What will be the conclusion of it? I don't know. It's too early to say. Mr. Ambassador, we appreciate enormously your being with us this evening. Your, your answers, as well as the presentation, have been a very thorough and complete description of a variety of matters. Uh, we admire your uh, deafness in presentation, and it's very, very good to be with us this long in Baltimore. <laughs>